Hi, I'm Kara, one of the CVTs here at Dev Lewis. This is one of our TAs, Allison, and this is Simon. And today we're going to demonstrate how to do a cephalic blood draw on a dog. Um, so the first things first is you want to make sure that you have all of your supplies ready before we actually get the dog out and ready. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have clippers here. Now you don't necessarily have to shave for a cephalic blood draw. We are today just so we can visualize the vein, but it's kind of up to you and your skill set whether you want to shave or not. Um, we have our blood tubes ready for whatever we, whatever test we need. Um, we have our syringe prepped and ready. Um, you want to make sure that you're choosing an appropriately sized syringe for the dog as well as for the sample that you'll need. So if you need a lot of blood, you may want to actually opt for a butterfly. Um, that way you can do multiple draws with only one poke. Um, if you only need a little bit of blood or the animal is super small or has really tiny veins, a one mil syringe may be your best option. But I'm going to use a three mil today for Simon. He's a nice, young, healthy dog. He's got sizable veins and I'm going to fill two blood tubes. So that seems appropriate. If you do pick a syringe that's too large for the vein, you do risk collapsing the vein and not getting a solid blood draw. So that may be something to think about before you start. And then I also have a Band-Aid ready to wrap his leg up so he doesn't get a hematoma when we're done. So I have all of my supplies and now I'm gonna grab my patient and my restrainer. So this is also really important that we're having proper restraint before we're doing a cephalic blood draw. Um, my success is basically based off of how comfortable the restraint is. So I'm gonna be talking with my assistant um, to make sure that we're nice and secure. I'm gonna be checking in before I poke to make sure that she feels secure. Um, if at any point that she feels like she doesn't have him or needs to readjust, we should be communicating that because I would hate to poke him and either Either he turned to bite me because she, he was not restrained properly or he jerk his leg back and then I lose my blood draw. So we're going to make sure that we have nice, safe restraint for everyone involved. Um, that involves one, uh, her being able to actually get her hand behind his elbow and extend his leg out. That way if he goes to pull back, she's got control of him. And then I'm going to actually use my hand, which you'll see later when I actually draw to steady it for myself. She's got her body on his body, so he can't stand up or try to back away from me at any point. And then she's got a nice hold of his head. Um, that way, if he goes to, to get me, if he feels a little insecure or if that was a little pokey, I'm nice and safe and I'm, I won't get bit. If you have an overly fractious or nervous animal, feel free to use a muzzle or an e-collar just for some extra protection. Um, or sometimes if they're really fractious or nervous, some sedation might be necessary too. Um, but Simon's a nice good boy. Um, how are you feeling with restraint? Good. Great. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, the cephalic vein is a really easy vein to hit for blood draws. Now coming from an ER, we typically try to avoid these just for blood or medications because if he were to need a catheter later, these are my first go-tos. So we usually try to do a hind leg first, but this is a cephalic demonstration. Um, so like I said, it runs straight down this middle of his leg. You can actually see it. He's got really decent veins. Um, it can be harder on our squatty friends, so our dachshunds, our corgis, our frenchies. They have these sort of L-shaped legs, so their anatomy is a little different. Sometimes that vein snakes around. Um, they also just tend to not have a lot of real estate. Um, so sometimes I feel like I'm poking and I'm basically poking my TA's finger because we're right there. Um, so she might actually be occluding where I'm trying to draw, so you may need to adjust restraint. All right, we're good. I'm gonna go ahead and shave real quick. I'm just, I don't need to shave all the way around like I would for a catheter. I'm just gonna shave a little line right on top so I can visualize his vein better. You can actually run your finger along here and feel where it's starting to bubble up because she's occluding, so I have a good surface of where I'm gonna go. So Allison's nice and steady. I'm gonna steady his leg um, holding. My needle is gonna be bevel up, and I'm gonna go parallel into the vein in a nice steady insertion. Pull back, and I'm pulling back nice and slow if I pull back too fast and too hard, I could actually collapse the vein and not get a lot of the blood that I need. If I notice that I'm having a difficult time, I can actually pump his foot as well and that will kind of help me get a little bit more blood out. I don't want to take too much from him. So I'm going to pull my needle out. I'm actually going to have Allison hold off really quickly so I can fill my blood tubes where I don't lose my precious sample clotting. And then I'm gonna get a Band-Aid on him so he doesn't get a hematoma. All 
So that went nice and smoothly. He had really apparent veins. Um, sometimes if they're decompensated, if their anatomy is not ideal, um, your initial poke may not be successful. Um, what we want to do is you can pull back just slightly without exiting the skin and insert to the left or to the right very slowly to see if you are successful. But we don't want to go rooting around in his leg and doing a lot of fishing that's causing some unnecessary damage. And you might lacerate that cephalic vein and cause it to blow and then you've we've blown that vessel and can't use it. If you do a couple readjustments and you're not successful, go ahead and remove that syringe and needle and just re-poke again. Um, if you do re-poke again, you don't wanna do more than one or two pokes using the same needle. Every time you insert this needle into the dog's skin, it's burring on a microscopic level. So we do wanna actually be changing needles every one to two pokes if we aren't successful. So we're going to let this sort of clot up. Um, Simon's a good boy and I know he won't mess with this, but you do want to be cautious of when we have um, known foreign body ingesters or, um, ingesters or puppies that we're not leaving band-aids on we're placing them back into the kennels because we've had some patients try to ingest them. So just be cautious of that. Um, but in just a few moments, that'll be safe to remove. Um, and that was how to do a dog cephalic blood draw.